Yes, it's, it's the, the savior of the plants, the queen of the compost. What? I knew this day would come. Ever since I started this series, I knew there was no avoiding this game. Let me say right now, this one is gonna get weird. It's gonna be weird and long, and I'm not sure any of us will be the same afterwards. I've seen lists before about the weirdest games ever made, and for some reason, this game never makes the list. This is the black sheep of weird games. That should say something. So let's fire up Armed and Delirious, also known as Dementia in Europe, also known as Granny in Germany. This is a graphic adventure game and it's not one, not two, but a five CD game. Holy cow. And I'll say right now, they're not padding things. They really make use of it. Here we go. And for our opening logo, Granny takes a bite of a mushroom, then falls dead, or else unconscious with her eyes open. And here's our logo. Then Granny attacks a flower thing. Alright, enough logos. Let's start the game. Okay, I'm gonna have to summarize here because this intro video goes on for over six minutes. Damn. We're treated to a silent movie of a girl roller skating while somebody is stalking her, then throws something at her head, then an elephant with trumpet valves embedded in its trunk starts rampaging around the neighborhood, people start freaking out and running out of the house, apparently there was a crime scene involving a man with gorilla arms, the elephant charges the camera, and we get a transition to inside a house. A narrator starts talking and introduces members of this family while saying everything is fine and people start screaming. From here, the narrator continues saying things are fine and the family just screams some more and starts attacking each other. So I guess this part's not that unusual. This goes on a little while. Next we get a shot of an empty lab or something with Morse code being telegraphed. Then a shot of Granny, our intrepid hero. A giant scissors cuts out the house while a rabbit laughs maniacally. Everyone gets sucked out into space except for Granny. Then an anthropomorphic rabbit mutters somewhat incoherently to himself for about a minute. No! Ah, he's a liar. Wait a minute. Th there is... Recipes. This only barely makes sense, but I think the simple version is he's trying to make carrot soup and is using Granny's cookbook to do so. And with that, we begin the game. Granny slides down the stairs and stop. We already have a problem. Let's talk about the sound design to this game. The music is usually in stereo sound. Everything else is a dice toss as to whether it's in mono or stereo. And that doesn't really matter, but what does matter is the mono sound is usually completely on the left side. Nothing on the right. I can't find anything in this mess. Though not always, sometimes it switches sides on its own. Listen to this, I didn't edit a thing. Oh, shaken causes me. Where? At last, something to catch things with. This sounds awful. I had to listen to most of this game with it partially in my left ear. Now I'm gonna spare you from that, but there's no easy way to clean this up. Because if I make everything mono, then the sound effects and dialogue go half value. And if I just go with the left audio, I lose the stereo data from the music and other sounds. So if anything sounds a little off in this video, just know that the real thing is even worse. Okay, back to the game. We enter the kitchen and after faking a seizure, we discover that the rabbit has stolen Granny's cookbook. Looks like he wants to rub it in too. And Granny is upset about this, a cow falls from the ceiling, and that's it. Now we're free to play the game. So wait, is this the plot? Why are we in space? What were those scissors? I'm a little lost here, guys. Let's consult the manual. The story. Perfect. The Crotoni family enjoy experimenting on animals and tormenting them. One of these animals decided this must stop. He moved into the communication world and started his vengeful voyage. 
He created special planets with the help of an unfriendly group of men and strange creatures. The planets you are going to bump into are the creation of the insane rabbit. He used parts and objects from the villa to create them. This rabbit wanted to make sure that his whole family was in one room, so that it would be easy for him to get rid of them and throw them into space. Anyway, things didn't exactly go as planned and the revenge scheme was executed. I read this all out loud so you didn't think I'm leaving out key details here. So we're... Okay, whatever. Let's just start playing. I wander around. Granny says this bottle smells horrible. What a disgusting smell. I believe her. If we exit, I can open a safe with a plunger in it. If we try to leave, we have an encounter right out of Alone in the Dark. If I enter the washroom, Granny slams her head against the piping, drinks from a bottle, then likes to inspect things from the business end. Hope there are no guns in the house. She falls on her back again and says this washing machine hairdryer thing is her spaceship. My spaceship. Okay. If we head upstairs, Granny slams her head against some books, drinks some more, and falls asleep. I didn't even press a button here. She has her own agenda. I'm kind of confused by bingoary here. At first I thought those were giant houseflies, but upon closer inspection I can see they're ducks. Oh, and look at that! There's an entrance to the side. And here's the bathroom. The cow from earlier is taking a bath and performing impromptu singing. I can lay a trap for it, it comes back. And naturally I can use the toilet. I'm sorry, did you say something? Yeah, that is weird, isn't it? Let's back up a minute. So the Crotoni family, actually it's the Crouton family because the narrator pronounced it earlier. Home of the lovely Crouton family. Guess that Y is silent. The Crouton family is a bunch of animal torturers. That's bizarre. I mean, animal torture is actually one of the big indicators somebody might grow up to be a serial killer. So I guess these are the bad guys? Does that mean Granny is an animal torturer too, or does that just mean the rest of her family is? Moving on, the antagonist is an insane rabbit that has the ability to create worlds. And he has stolen your cookbook, which the game implies he wants so he can make carrot soup. Actually, never mind. We're gonna come back to this because I have bigger problems right now. I'm stuck. This is about as far as I got in the game on my own. Just messing with items, Granny muttering to herself, and five rooms to explore. Welcome back to 90s adventure gaming. This is exactly the sort of experience you could expect from an adventure game with no walkthrough. Get 20 minutes in, then become hopelessly lost. The game may as well be over. Well, since we're in the future, a walkthrough does exist for this game, but this is no ordinary walkthrough. Oh no. This walkthrough was written by the lead tester of the game, and essentially just copied by someone else and put on the internet. Since it came from the source, that means it's possible no one figured this out on their own. So who knows how many have actually gone down the path of beating this game. But now we have just 433 easy steps to get there. <sighs> actually, I'm lying. Some of these steps aren't easy at all. So now that I have a walkthrough, the next step is to drag this pipe. Uh, what? Oh, now it highlights. And if you just click on it, like every other graphic adventure game, it doesn't work. No wonder I didn't figure it out. That's it, I'm starting a list. Picky object selection. May as well add nonsense puzzles. This came out in 97, so that's a given. Okay, so we drag the pipe. Granny gives us a pole dance, a bucket falls on her head, some music starts, Granny dances to the new beat, and a cactus blooms. This tune is pretty catchy. Shake baby, shake me, shake me, baby. baby. Also in the walkthrough, we learned that I was almost there with the cow back in the bathroom. I not only had to put the carpet over the hole, but I also had to drag the trash can and sit on top of it. Then he falls into the trap and catapults me at the suntan lotion. So yeah, there's another one for the list. The thing is, this is counterintuitive. Because if you stand in the middle of the bathroom, the cow will never come towards you, like you're scaring it off. 
But if you sit on top of a trash can, then it comes right at you. Ugh. And with the help of the walkthrough, I learned that there is an entrance I didn't even find. Look at this screen. Would you have thought there's an exit in the lower left? I mean, maybe you would have, but the visual space is suggesting it's closed off. And look, nothing, no exit. Here's a nice wide exit, nothing here. Ah, the other lower left exit. I admit, I can be a little dumb with this stuff, but this game can be particularly bad with this sort of thing. So we enter the kitchen slash home basketball court, and if it isn't the same damn thing. <laughs> Hey look, a doorway. We can go outside, right? No, we can't. But we can exit under the stairs. That's not that intuitive visually. I guess this one is on me though, since you can see the family walking there in the intro. Anyway, we continue onward, but not before I activate the remote control coffin. Yep, there we go. Actually, I guess I should get this out of the way. We don't just have a normal inventory. The game likes to go out of its way to tell us Granny is storing everything in her bra. Called the Braventory. Gee, how clever. I don't know why they did this. I mean, God forbid an old woman carry a big purse. Never heard of that one before. Or just ignore how she's carrying all this stuff entirely. Like 95% of all other graphic adventure games. It brings up this cheap Windows menu too that you always have to resize and close again in order to access more than two items. <sighs> I can take whatever pill I want. Whatever pill I desire is mine. Pill power. So in the bedroom here, Granny tries to lie down but gets disturbed by an elephant. But not to worry, Granny's old. She doesn't give up on the first try. If she wants to take a nap, she'll take a nap. See? I thought that elephant was killed earlier and mounted on their wall, but I guess there's a lot of elephants in this neighborhood. Moving on, we dive into the trash can and end up in your son's secret den. Boy, I hope I'm as mobile as Granny is when I'm her age. That's a pretty good landing from the vent. Plus her flip off the spring mattress isn't bad either. Anyway, here we find a tape recorder with an audio journal on it and get a big part of the plot. This goes on for four minutes, so I'll give the short version. George, the dad of the family, is having a midlife crisis. I find it interesting how he's complaining about his sex-crazed wife, yet we found out earlier he has sex on the mind so much he was reading a porno magazine at the dinner table while he was eating, trying to hide it from everyone. I guess when you're a stud like George, you can afford to be picky. Anyway, we discover the evil rabbit approached him in private and offered him a deal to help him set up a lucrative store in his universe in exchange for giving the rabbit his villa and everyone inside it. But before George agreed, the rabbit gave him a tour of his personal universe. So the entire rest of the game is going to be following in his footsteps, seeing the rabbit's worlds. What we saw earlier was George closing the deal. This plot has been bothering me from the start. There's too many things that almost make sense, then turn left. Like the main plot is the rabbit has stolen Granny's cookbook so he can make carrot soup. Sure, that's a workable goofy plot, but then the rabbit is also a demigod with the power to create worlds and shape fate and time itself. If you want to enter the great rabbit's offices, you will need a time coordinator which coordinates between the right time and the rabbit's time. Oh. Well then doesn't the scale of that kind of take away from the carrot soup plot? So it's up to the Crouton family to stop the evil rabbit. Except they're a family of animal torturers. So can we really get behind them on this? And why is the rabbit dealing with a family of known animal torturers? He has the power to bring down a giant scissors from space and is already taking everyone and everything by force. Why is he negotiating with George at all? He's not special. He's a salesman that reads porno mags at the dinner table. And we already have a causality problem since the manual states that the worlds are created from the villa's objects. But George was touring these worlds before the deal was even struck to give the rabbit his things. This plot is throwing me a lot of curveballs. Ah, let's keep moving. Maybe this will get explained by the end. I'm as much in the dark right now as you are. But thanks to walkthrough power, we continue onward 
find supplies, and get ready to fire up Granny's spaceship. This would probably fit around my throat, or maybe others. Yeah, watch out. So we move the minecart track in the laundry room aside, and off we go. From here, the game opens up tremendously. The good news is we can go to any of the rabbit's worlds, and almost all of them contain sub-worlds within. This is awesome. I can't have too much of this sort of thing. And hey, it's non-linear. We can go wherever we want. And that's the problem. See, a famous example of non-linear gameplay is Mega Man. You pick whatever order you want to fight the bosses in, and that determines the game's flow. Well, that's a great concept, except this is a totally linear game. You cannot progress anywhere unless you have the right items. And you can't get the right items without going to the worlds in the right order. So yeah, you can wander around, but this is all the illusion of a non-linear game. And with all these new worlds come disc swaps. This is a 5 CD game. Now unlike the last game, the structure of these game files make it impossible for me to merge everything together. I have to swap the discs. Or at least the emulated ones. The walkthrough says it's structured to minimize the number of disc swaps, so let me tell you there is an absolute minimum of 25 swaps. Oh my, let's get going. The first place we need to go the walkthrough calls Gazbig. It's a tiny aisle in space with a van crash into a flagpole. The resident here wants you to leave. He lives with his pig and translucent chicken. Later you can save him from freezing to death. He doesn't seem to care. For now we grab the cloud gyroscope and continue on our way. This brings us to our first disc swap as we head to the black hole inside a circular saw blade stuck inside a planet. We end up in a giant toilet and open trash dump with some ants on the move. Right march, you soldiers! Onward, onward, march! That's not a kosher step! Ah, they're army ants. Well, the living piggy bank with bloodshot eyes seems happy. In order to progress, we have to set up a little ramp and click on the shovel four times. Yeah, that's another one for the list. Oh, and we're not done. The walkthrough specifies how we need to click on this bracket off in the background by the rest of the junk. Oh yeah, everyone would think to click on that. There we go. And we lower the toilet and head off into the woods. Okay, now am I going crazy or does the music here sound like the undead music from Warcraft 3? I guess they're both just droning ambient noise, huh? Further into the woods, we come across two goons taking care of a baby while a kangaroo does laps around us. Granny freaks out a little bit at the triple X sign. Granny freaks out about a lot of things. And here we have to set a trap so the kangaroo will step on a lever to catapult Granny to hit a button. But unlike the cow and suntan lotion, this one requires precision timing. I can't emphasize enough how bad this is. Careful timing sandwiched between non-interactive animations and a graphic adventure game is such a bad idea. This is not Super Meat Boy. These types of games by definition are slower and more relaxed in pace. I hate crap like this. Anyway, we turn off the lights, beat up the thugs, then Granny's incompetence causes her to chuck a baby down a ravine where it's left for dead. I think this is the first sign that maybe Granny isn't really the hero. I mean, the tone of this game has been mostly goofy fun up until this point. But that's a pretty dark turn. You can still hear it crying. Oh well, I guess that's not Granny's problem, at least in her mind. So with that, we head down the path to an S&M club of a dominatrix beating up some aliens or something. Granny ends up joining and hammering the alien's fingers, then giving the other one a smack too. This is adding to the vibe that Granny is not a kind-hearted soul. But in her defense, from how she talks to herself, she seems to be going with the flow more than anything else, and could be in just sort of a haze of senility. Don't worry, we'll come back to that, but we're done here. On a lighter note, we head to the door world, or whatever this is, 
I will say I do like a lot of the little touches in this game. And from here we head to Pinball World. This isn't on the map. This is one of the sub worlds. Again, I cannot have too much of this sort of thing. Next, Grady joins the ranks of Sonic the Hedgehog as a video game character who also moonlights as a pinball. And our first stop is at a gun shop where the owner is a little preoccupied. Whatever. Uh, baby, this is not my first launch. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's good. I'm walking on the moon, baby. I'm in zero gravity. Oh, yeah. Somebody put up a head shield. Oh, mama. Oh, God. Oh, yes. Walking on the moon. This is one small step for man. One giant leap for sex. Oh, baby. Anyway. Oh. Cowboy Astronaut Elvis comes to the front of the store. <laughs> Granny manages to not kill herself. Then suddenly we're attacked by a robber who steals Granny's robbentory. And as a quick tip to any aspiring robbers in the audience, unless you're a Terminator, I would advise against robbing a gun store. Anyway, Granny is having none of this, so she immediately chases down the robber and gets her inventory back. Which kind of makes you wonder what the point to any of that was. <laughs> Moving on, we head into a bar and here we have yet another puzzle that would not have occurred to me. First, we have to hand a beer to the poker player, which Granny spits in because she's a misanthrope, I guess? I mean, a lot of Granny's behavior you can blame on dementia, but this seems kind of mean to do to a complete stranger. Anyway, the puzzle here is you see that coat rack in the back? Yeah, there, behind the IV drip. Well, you have to add your coat hanger to that, then click on the door with just the right timing as the player exits the bathroom to lock them in there somehow. Who would think to do this? You can barely see it to start, plus the physics of it don't quite make sense to me, but whatever. We then take their place at the poker table, Granny plays 52 card pickup, the guy in the wheelchair leaves because he can tell this is going south, Granny steals something and we're off. Da da da! From here we head to Lower Door World, get a disc swap, and now is a great time to mention this game is a bastard. See, I originally tried to run this on Windows 98, didn't happen. But hey, the game did run on Windows XP. The inventory colors were off and it would crash for every single time I had to swap the disc, but I could insert the new CD and resume my progress by relaunching the game. Well, not anymore. See, this is disc five and disc five hates everyone. You can play this game on XP, but you'll never beat it. So I bit the bullet and did a Windows 95 install, which I tend to be afraid of because it seems like I always have trouble with the sound card drivers, but it worked. How fitting that a game about madness will only run on Windows 95. This is the European version Dementia though. I used to have the USA version, but a disc got scratched in a stairway accident. And if you lose one disc on a five disc game, it's all over. So maybe this is a regional problem, but I doubt it. Even on 95, if I try to load this game off of disc five first, you know, the one at once, it still gets grumpy. And even when I have the right disc using a CD emulator, Windows 95 doesn't always detect it until I reboot. Anyway, long story short is I got it working, but this is as stable as a box of dynamite. No smoking. So we enter a hallway and, oh, oops. Yeah, I forgot to do that. Sorry. So we enter a hallway and this sound plays every single time you come back to the hallway. Let's have a listen. We also have a guy in a Viking hat holding some toilet paper moving from door to door. He seems to have his own agenda. And next we foil a security camera by jumping back and forth, but only in the right axis. Naturally that opens the electronically locked door. And around here we get a cutscene of some not creepy at all anthropomorphic plants acting as underground freedom fighters working against the rabbit because he wants to add them to the suit. Also here we have what may be the most telegraphed joke I've seen in my life. 
The game spends about a minute and a half explaining that they need a secret agent who is stealthy, skilled, inconspicuous, and so on, essentially the opposite of everything Granny is. It's a slow and dragging description of what he's looking for. But the cutscene finally ends and we enter a police station. By the moon. A moon. Something. Here we get interrogated, roughed up by a cop who's probably a woman, and get thrown out. And back to another long cutscene of the plant discussing how you are not the right person for the job of spy, while the head plant keeps interpreting the opposite of what he says. This goes on forever! It's the same joke as before! What could be funnier than explaining what's coming for four minutes? Like, hey, if somebody is walking and slips on a wet floor, that can be funny. But if somebody else says, now watch out, the floor is really wet. Are you listening? I said the floor is wet because it's- ah! This part is terrible. Back to Granny. So not one to be dissuaded, she returns and we listen to sounds of torture alongside easy listening music. Then, according to the walkthrough, we need to strangle the desk clerk with our scarf. They even go so far as to say you have to wait until he bends down to get something. You say goodnight! There. Now I know what you're thinking. Did she cause him to pass out, or did she just straight up murder him? Well, revisiting this area much later in the game after a lot of things have happened, the clerk's body is still there. So yeah, I think she killed him. Granny also smashes some guy's head in so she can steal his telescope. I'm not sure we can blame all this on dementia anymore. Maybe Granny is just a bad person. Oh well. Next it's off to the hair salon. The hedgehog is getting her spikes trimmed, so of course Granny's going to wreck everything. We have to set a trap for the hairdresser. This part I understand. I mean, I don't understand the motive, but I understand the concept. An open manhole for him to fall into. So how do we get him to fall into the trap? Well, we have to sit on the couch, then wait until Granny shifts her legs, then quickly click on the couch again because we have a small time window and a small hit detection also. Then, her getting up from the chair and doing absolutely nothing causes the hairdresser to fall into the manhole. If you don't do it exactly like this, it won't work. Who would ever think to do this? You wouldn't even do this through dumb luck because the timing is so specific and there's no visual indication that you're doing anything different. On the contrary, there's even a red herring where you can knock a bust off the shelf. Seems like that would be part of the trap, right? No, that does absolutely nothing. I've had the idea before that instead of handing out prison sentences, you could just sentence someone to beat a game in a specific way before they're let out of prison. Like if you're charged with aggravated assault, you have to go to prison until you can beat Super Meat Boy with only one life. And if you murder someone, you get to be armed and delirious with no hints. So with the hairdresser out of the way, the next step is to eliminate the hedgehog. This one is easy. You just tell her her shoes are the same as yours and insult her. This allows you to reveal the secret passage, even though there's no reason you needed that chair. You can push it forward earlier also. And despite Granny's zippy movements, he or she actually walks like a real old person down the stairs. There's a reason for this, coming right up. We enter the room and... I think that... It's forbidden to think, talk, or do anything that's not in the interest of finding the passage. But... It's forbidden to think. Believe me, it's for your own good. After the voice releases you, we have maybe five seconds to solve this puzzle. Nope, too late. Yeah, now we need to start all over again. Take your time, Granny. Oh yeah, take your time on these steps too. Ah, I can't take it. This game's grinding me down. That's it, intermission, intermission time. 